In this video you will see how a crystal radio set works and then discover some of the hints and tips about building and using them. The crystal radio was one of the first forms of radio ever used. It laid the foundation for today's radio technology. Analog broadcast radios have moved on to digital radios and of course there are many professional uses for radio as well. Today we rely on mobile phones and these use radio technology at their very core. All these radios can trace their beginnings back to the crystal radio set. The electronic circuit for a crystal radio set is generally very simple like the one we see here. It uses just a handful of components. Using this circuit it's possible to see the basics of how a radio works. The first area we need to look at is the tuned circuit. This consists of an inductor or coil and a capacitor which is made variable to enable it to tune various signals. This circuit has what is called a response curve, an area or band of frequencies within which it can receive signals and reject others on frequencies outside the band. Varying the capacitor causes the response curve to move. In this case we see it moving towards the wanted signal. Eventually some of the signal is received but it takes a little more adjustment for the signal to be at the centre of the curve where the maximum signal level is received. The next element within the crystal radio is the detector. Early crystal radios used a crystal of material onto which a small wire was placed and hence the names crystal radio and also cat's whisker. Today we use a semiconductor diode. The incoming signal varies in strength in line with the audio a form of modulation known as amplitude modulation. And now we see the outline or envelope of the signal. The diode only passes current in one direction. It rectifies it so only one half of the signal appears at the output. Next, the high frequency elements of the signal are filtered out so that only the required audio remains. This audio is finally converted from the electrical signals to sound waves by an earpiece or headphones. The weak signals picked up by an antenna would not be sufficient to drive a loudspeaker, so earphones must be used. Although it's possible to build a crystal radio from scratch, many kits are available which make it much easier. These can use one of a variety of different circuits. When using a crystal radio, it's worth bearing in mind a few points. Once completed, check the circuit to make sure all the wiring has been done correctly. Even the most experienced constructors can make mistakes. A good antenna and a good earth connection are needed to make sure that the largest signal enters the radio and can be heard on the earpiece. Also, make sure you're near enough to a broadcast transmitter. With many more services moving to VHF, FM and to digital formats, many medium wave AM transmitters are being shut down and transmitters may be more distant. An ideal antenna may be like the one shown in the diagram here, but in many cases something much less elaborate may suffice. But there are a few points to bear in mind. Make sure the antenna wire cannot fall onto any power lines or could touch any power lines under any circumstances, otherwise you could get a very large electric shock. Also, don't operate the set when an electrical storm is underway or is imminent. Lightning can induce very large voltages even when there isn't a direct strike. Apart from a few precautions, crystal radios are safe to use. They're great fun to build and to use and they are also an excellent way of finding out more about radio and how it works.